Hi there, I'm Colette Jacoboetz from Mrs. J in the Library, and today I'm going to walk you through the new Pennsylvania Young Readers' Choice digital activities that I created for the 2022-23 list of nominated books for kindergarten through third grade. Uh, so each book has at least one slide where uh, they will have, students will be able to rate the book out of five stars, um, and these stars can be filled in. Um, after reading it. And then there's also at least one activity, sometimes two or three different activities to choose from, or you can choose which activity you're going to do with students and only give them access to that activity. Um, so a couple things about all of the slides that you should know is that um, they're color coded, that this stripe behind the title um, is color coded for the recommended grade levels that I would say a book is appropriate for. Uh, now this is my opinion, and so obviously you use your best professional judgment, um, but I would say that anything with a yellow band behind the title is good for any grade level, like kindergarten all the way up to third grade, um, and even beyond. Um, however, if it has a green, and you'll see most of these are yellow, um, green ones would be ones that I would read to first grade and up. So I would skip kindergarten with this particular title, not maybe for content, but it might be because the book is longer or perhaps because the vocabulary in the book is just a little tougher, or I just think it wouldn't make a really great read aloud for kindergarten. Um, and then if you go a little further, the blue ones are for second grade and up. Um, and in this case, it's not actually about uh, content, it's more about the length of the book and the format and how it's written. I would really say this is better for second and third grade and I would skip kindergarten and first grade. Um, so you'll see a stripe for every single book that's on the list here. Every single slide has stars here and for students to fill them in, they click on it and then they go up to their fill bucket I would just say go to the bucket um, and choose, they, I let students choose whatever color they want. Um, and the ones that have these two-tone stars, you can actually do a half a star. If students click on the star and then click again on the half part of the star, they can actually fill in the half part. Um, so they could give something three and a half stars if they wanted. Um, some of the other ones don't have that if the stars appear uh, underneath the book. These are just regular stars. They just have to pick whole star numbers. Um, so that's kind of something about all of them. Oh, and also the, um, there's a hand here. That means that this cover is clickable and it will take students to Epic. Um, in order for them to do that, you, the teacher, has to have an Epic account that they could access and have a class code to get into. Um, those links as well will always be down here in the slide notes as well. So you can always get them to share out with students. Uh, directly. So let's go over the uh, list of books here. Um, so the first one, I also put these in a specific order, kind of going from um, simplest and shortest books to more complex books, because we know students will develop um, more abilities to uh, sit and listen to a story for a little bit longer as the school year progresses, um, and they'll be adding more skills. So I just started with the simplest books first. Um, so A is for Another Rabbit um, is an alphabet book, um, and so for, uh, especially for the littlest ones, I made an activity that's just very basic, practicing writing the alphabet. I think almost any kindergartner and probably a lot of first graders could just use a little extra practice with that. Um, and the second activity is to just write your fa favorite animal at the top of a paper, write one word about your animal for every letter of the alphabet. So in the book, the, every single letter has something to do with rabbits or bunnies, and much to the annoyance of the other animals in the book. And so this, you really don't need much. I mean, it's basic supplies of something to write with, color with, um, and just regular paper. Um, you could make a template for this if you wanted to, um, but I kept this pretty simple as a drawing activity, just something you would need paper and pencils for. Uh, the next book is I Am a Thief. Um, and so this one I think is a really good one to have a discussion with about how sometimes we make bad choices. You know, sometimes we make them even on purpose, but we can still fix them. So the activity is the same, but it's a drawing activity or a writing activity. I always prefer to give my students a choice between doing drawing or writing and let them pick 
which way they wanted to do the activity, but depending on the supplies and resources you have, you could tell them that you want them to do one or the other. Um, for the writing activity, they would just double click inside of this text box and they can type their answer. So the question being, how did you uh, talk, think about a time that you made a bad choice? And how did you fix it? Or how did you make a better choice the next time? And so again, the purpose being not to shame anybody, but just to think about how we can all become better humans. Um, the next book I actually have here, um, Milo Imagines the World. Um, this is, had to be a drawing activity. It just did. The whole book is about how Milo loves to draw and he's drawing the people around him and he imagines kind of the ending, what happens next for the person in a white dress on the subway. Um, and then by the end of the story, he sort of expands his imagination to think, oh, well, the story could have ended differently. This person could have done this instead. Um, and that that's okay too. Uh, so this had to be a drawing activity just to allow students to use their imagination and draw a story about someone they saw this week, someone they saw in the grocery store, or someone they know more closely like their teacher or a classmate, um, and to imagine, you know, a happy ending story. Uh, the next one, it has two activities, uh, except Antarctica. Um, this one is just such a funny book. I mean, you're going to love reading this one. Um, and it is also on Epic. Um, so this was a simple, again, uh, either drawing activity if you want to keep it very simple. Um, but if you'd like to take it a step farther, especially maybe for older students, um, and you have access to either PebbleGo or Worldbook, or you can use Britannica Kids, actually, without a subscription. Um, so you could learn more about turtles or any of the animals really in the book or the continents of the world. Um, so there's a couple different directions you could go. Um, and I would keep this as an exploratory research. I wouldn't be having students write anything down. Um, it's more getting them, you know, to choose an area or a topic they'd like to learn more about and use one of these resources get familiar with how the resource works, and you'll see over and over again, I come back to using the same resources over again, the same databases or websites uh, that are trustworthy so that students can get used to using them for a purpose, to find out more or to learn more or to find the answer to a question. Uh, so don't feed the coos. Oh my gosh, I have to say, this is just such a fun book. Um, and I happen to find the illustrator, Heather Fox, um, on Instagram, she has a little video where she shows how to draw a coup. Like, a, it's basically a pigeon. So, um, I just thought this was such a great book for drawing, especially. Um, and if you can access Instagram from your school's uh, network, then I think it would, it would be a really cool idea to show how to draw that and have students give it a shot. Um, but if they, if you don't have access to that, you can still have students draw the pigeons following the student around, you know, for their day and, and asking them a question like, how would you get rid of the pigeons that are following you around? Um, so just have a little bit of fun with that. Um, the next one is Boys Dance, which is m made by the American Ballet Theater. Um, and I gotta say, they have so many great activities. Their website, um, and especially this ABT Kids Daily, is just chock full of cool things and active things to do. Um, so yeah, definitely explore that and make sure that your district um, hasn't blocked the website because it is has a lot of video content. Um, so they might block them. A lot of the YouTube videos might not show up. So just double check that for your own district. Um, but this just links directly there. Um, and then the two activities of the many that they have there um, that I thought would be most useful as recommended videos um, are that this one is the seven major movements or positions of classical ballet. Um, so it's a very short video, a couple minutes long, and I would encourage you to let students get up and move and try it along with you, especially if you can show it up on a big projector screen. Um, and the next one is Calvin Royale, the third from the book. He's actually featured in this book. Um, he has like a one minute, 30 second um, dance he does in Central Park, New York, uh, and it's through the seasons. So he does the same choreography and the same dance to the same music in all four seasons. And it's just kind of a cool thing to, to watch him moving and he's in public. And um, so yeah, it, it's just kind of this cool, quick little way to show 
you know, what ballet can look like and how strong Calvin is as a dancer. So those are some really great activities to try. Uh, and if you can't use any of those videos, of course we know every district's different. Um, then I have just a writing or drawing activity to just draw or write about your favorite way to dance. And so of course there's all kinds of different dance. Um, and they mention more than just ballet in the book. So I just thought that would be a really cool way to highlight uh, that. Uh, the next one is also on Epic. Um, and it's in Spanish on Epic as well, so you can make it a bilingual read aloud experience. Um, Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. Um, and this one is a very, you know, this is a heartfelt kind of story. Um, I found myself tearing up as I was reading it um, about, you know, the painful experience of your friend moving away and not getting to do some of the same things. Um, so trying to keep it a little positive and lighter, um, I was just encouraging students to draw or write ways that you can connect or talk with a friend who moves away. So things like having um, video chats or, you know, Zoom calls, things. And, you know, if they students feel comfortable, they could share it with others in their table or their pods or whatever, you know, seating arrangements that you have, maybe with a, a partner next to them. Um, and so, yeah, I just thought that would, that's one that all, you could have some really interesting discussions about. Um, and, and just to know that students might have some strong feelings and some powerful feelings when you're reading that. Um, the next one has actually many slides. There are five different slides here, um, and they're each for a different database. So you should know that for all of the research activities I have here, I've already looked up the keywords so that I know PebbleGo and WorldBook has all of these um, articles already in there. So I've, I've done that for you. Um, so for animals that estivate about summertime, um, not hibernation, but estivation, um, I just went through the whole book and picked out the different animals and checked that they were in Pebble Go. So if you don't have access to one of these databases, I would encourage you to just delete that slide. Like just pretend it, like, you know, delete it before you share it with students. Um, and only keep the slides on here that you do have access to the database. Um, remembering that Britannica Kids doesn't need a subscription. Um, you can have a subscription, certainly. Um, and National Geographic for Kids is, of course, available as a website. Uh, there aren't as many um, of the animals on here. However, some of them were very specific, like the Christmas Island Red, red Crab was not in any of the others um, other than just as a crab. So that could be an interesting way to, to keep maybe this one and one other database on there. Um, and if you want, if you are lucky enough to have access to a bunch of different things, you can use this slide or move any of these database icons to this slide as well. Um, the After Dark one, this is such a beautiful poetry book. I mean, it's just, uh, I, I think, you could skip some of them if you wanted to make it a shorter read aloud for kindergarten uh, and you could read the back matter there's a whole section in the back on um your very very tiny print um where i would ask students if you have time at the end of your read aloud to say you know hey what which ones would you like to know a little more about and read a little bit extra for older students um so this is a, again i had a Paper drawing activity, you know, just draw a picture of nighttime at your house. Something very simple, especially for younger students. Um, but if you wanted to take it a little farther to research, again, I split this into four slides, depending on um, what each database had access to. Some of them have more of them and other than others. Also, uh, the cougar that's described in the book also has other names like mountain lion um, or puma. So I put those in there as well. Um, to check. But um, again, you would want to delete the slides that you, if you don't have access to that resource. Um, and then Winged Wonders, you'll see we have a sort of an animal theme going here at the end. Um, Winged Wonders is also more about citizen science and about how people interact with the natural world. Um, and so it's such a cool way to highlight how everyone that worked on this project and discovered where the monarchs migrated to and how they migrated back, like how they had to all work together, even if they weren't directly communicating with each other. So this one, I kept it pretty simple. Um, most uh, databases have, and would have something about butterflies and websites. Um, and so, and there's some 
really good stuff about migration as well, um, like in Brain Pop Jr. So again, if you have access to that resource, you could put the username and password there unless students are logging in with um, their Google account or Clever. Um, and then the end of something wonderful. Um, I do want to sort of make a point here that this one, it deals with death. Okay, so the end of something wonderful, a practical guide to a backyard funeral. Um, it talks with about how if you lose a pet and you're, you know, burying it in your backyard. Um, so they talk about the something dead and the something wonderful and uh, the something dead being something wonderful and remembering that. Um, it is a very uplifting book, I have to say. Um, but because it deals with some tough topics, um, I would say, you know, just be mindful of that. Maybe you could even do a, like co-teach a lesson with the counselor so that they could be there during the read aloud or discussing it after the read aloud. Um, so this one is, um, there's a bunch of resources actually here at the bottom that I'd like to highlight. Um, there's two activities, a drawing activity or writing activity um, to just draw or write about something wonderful. It doesn't have to be something that's gone or something that has is disappeared or died, but just something wonderful in their life. Um, uh, but I did put a note in here about, you know, that you can, you can delete this if you need to, if you feel sad about losing someone or a pet, um, talk to a grown-up you trust. Um, so there was another book in Epic from, by uh, Benny and Penny, the graphic novel series, called How to Say Goodbye. And I think that's a really good, nice pairing that you could do, or, you know, the counselor could read one, you could read one. Um, so I think there's a lot of good uh, connections there if you wanted to take that further. And then there's an, also a link I found to a Facebook Live worksheet workshop um, where the two women running it are working with uh, Gilda's Club in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, and they have a whole section on grieving and about how children grieve differently than grown-ups. Um, now they're using in the context of like, as a parent, would you want to take a child to a funeral? They talk a little bit about that, but they read aloud this book. So you could use that video of them reading aloud um, as part of your read aloud. You could use that under, under educational use. Um, or you could just use the workshop as like a starting point for yourself to, to know like how to share this, you know, sensitively. Um, so I just added that in there in the slide notes. Um, and then the last one where there's an activity for it is who knew? Um, by the way, I think everyone should have all of Annette Whipple's um, animal books in their library. They're just so fantastic. Um, the Truth About Owls. Uh, so this one I do have the blue stripe on because it's very much, it reminds me of like the, the DK books where there's just a lot going on. There's captions, there's all kinds of stuff. And and yes, I, the other reason I marked it as a blue stripe, like second grade and up, is there is a good amount of blood. Like, uh, like the, the owls eating things and like pecking it, like, it definitely, it, it's very realistic. It is true to life. So for some students, that might be it pretty intense, which is why I was thinking maybe not for, for kindergarten and first grade. Um, however, you use your best judgment, really. Um, and so, but yeah, it goes through a whole bunch of different things. Like um, the text is also pretty small. So that's another reason I thought it might be best for older students. Um, however, you could choose to read just some of the captions or read just certain sections of it um, if you wanted to read it to a younger audience. Um, so it was really difficult to find, I have to say, um, different types of owls <laughs> in these uh, different resources. So some of these you'll find in National Geographic Kids or Pebble Go. You'll kind of have to double check um, if you don't have access to one of these. You know, you might just want to look over to make sure students can find at least something about, I mean, most of them have something on owls. If they search owl, they'll find something. Um, so then the last three on the list for K to three are Maloney and Friends, mm, excuse me, Avon Green Sleuthing Machine, and DJ Funky Foot, uh, Butler for Hire. Um, so these are longer books. They're longer chapter books or graphic novels. So my thinking with not having an activity for these is that if you're going to do a read aloud in one class with you know, one of these books, the read aloud itself is going to take longer. So therefore, students might probably won't have time to do an extra activity 
after they choose books or check out um, during library class, they would really only have time to just do their stars, as I used to say. Um, you know, just mark the stars, fill out however many they want to fill out, and then it's probably time to go. Um, so that's the reason I didn't include an activity for these three. Um, another option you could do if you're not going to do a read aloud for these is to just have these three not check outable, you know, but just always in your library that anyone after they finish their activity and doing their stars, they could go over and choose one of these books to read with a friend um, or something like that so that they could also vote on these. Um, and so the last couple slides here, I just wanted to point out if you have access to other resources like these, you can always um, copy and paste or cut and paste these into any one of these other slides. So if you don't have access to Pebble Go or Pebble Go Next, but you do have BrainPop or you do have um, Power Kits, then you can take those out and plop them in kind of wherever you need to with your link. Um, so these, uh, some of them are linked like BrainPop uh, and Power Kids is linked to the regular Power Kids website. It is not linked to your specific website um, and your specific login, obviously. So you'd want to change that link if you're from Pennsylvania. Um, so that's everything there. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at mrsjinthelibrary.com and you can click the contact link and I will get back to you. Um, and so, yes, good luck to everybody. And I hope you enjoy these amazing books this year.